two. You're very welcome. This is information evening for the Elements uh, 21, and you and I'll introduce you tonight to a couple of people. Um, when I'm finished, I'll be handing you over to Mr. Paul Bryce. He's one of the deputy principals. Present also is Mr. Tom Doyle, another deputy principal, and Mr. Colin McCarthy, a deputy principal. Um, in addition, Mr. Stephen Carey, who's assistant uh, principal, will be explaining some of the options to you. And Angela Curran, one of our guidance counselors, will take you through some information as well. I'm uh, in the background is Belvedere College Chapel. And I always say when I'm introducing people to the college and indeed students to the college, this is what lies at the heart of the college. It is a Catholic Jesuit school and we're very proud of that tradition. And part of that tradition is academic excellence. And academic excellence means a variety of things to people, but really what it is for us is that every child discovers their potential as a lifelong learner. They discover what it is to learn and how to learn. Knowledge is free in our society. It is freely available. So that the value of knowledge is not in itself, but actually knowing what to do with that knowledge. Learners today will have a variety of experiences. We need them to be innovative problem solvers. We need them to be creative communicators. We want them to be critical thinkers. We also want them to be investigative explorers and versatile readers, and they must be resourceful learners. Therefore, they will discover many things in their journey through this college. Their life experience will be enhanced by the co-curricular program, and we call it co-curricular because it's not extra. We believe that learning, all learning, is invaluable and that it hasn't just doesn't take place in the classroom. It takes place in all aspects of their lives. And we help them to discover that by teaching them to reflect. Central aspect to this is subject choice. It is not a life and death decision. Thankfully, in the junior certificate course, they will discover many subjects and they will experience a broad, well-balanced curriculum. That said, the choices they should make should be for those subjects that they enjoy and that they will learn from. Learning is a great experience and it shouldn't be aimed always to some objective like what career or job it will take you to. Nobody knows that. What they do know is that they will thrive when it's actually something that they enjoy and that they experience the joy in learning with their teachers. And I say with their teachers because we emphasize that each learner is responsible for their learner. You as educate, as their primary educator and their parent look after their welfare and we share in that wonderful journey with you. Over the next six years, we will discover many things together, but ultimately we always have your child, child's best interest at heart. Therefore, this evening is an example of how technology has changed our lives. When we pre-recorded this, we were getting it ready for you so that you can sit in the comfort of your own home and peruse it and make a very well informed judgment. The information you receive from the NCA and from ourselves is thoroughly comprehensive. Don't panic that if you don't know everything about a subject, read it at your leisure and make your choice based on what you know as a student and as a parent that you enjoy learning. So without further ado, I'll hand you over to Mr. Paul Bryce, Deputy Principal. Good evening and welcome um, Elements 21 if you're there and, and parents to tonight's event. I'm here to talk very quickly and briefly about um, the pastoral system and what to expect in Belvedere when you arrive this August. We follow um, the concept of Cura Personalis, which is a Jesuit worldwide um, system of the child at the centre of all that we do. When you arrive in, um, in September, when the, um, your sons arrive in September, they'll be placed in a form group. And it's a form group, 28 boys that they will stay with for six years. They'll form lifelong friendships and they'll celebrate success and overcome challenges together. You will have a, a form tutor who will meet you on the first day and that form tutor more than likely will be there for six years as well. He'll be a key person in your son's life in helping them through um, the trials and tribulations of secondary school, giving advice and being um, a good friend. You'll also have a head of year in every year group. Currently our head of year is um, Pat Rogan for Elements. 
Pat has been the head of year for Elements for the last 18 years and he has plenty of experience. You'll have a link DP and currently in first and second year, I'm the link deputy principal. And we're all there to make sure that we keep the child in the centre and we follow Kira Personalis to make your son's time in the college as rewarding as possible. What you have to look forward to on your first, first week in the college? Well, behind Mr Foley and his backgrounds, but on the screen here as well, we have the College Chapel and that's where your journey, the journey starts and ends. You will meet in the College Chapel the first day and it is the heart of our college. You'll meet your new classmates, you'll meet your form to in your head and you'll do this in our induction week. Our induction week is a time just for first years, just for elements to come in to meet all these different people, to find their classroom and if uh, COVID uh, restrictions are eased, get their lockers. You'll see in the middle picture there, that's the elements from this year, their jersey day that we did for Junior Vincent DePaul, raising some money. That's what our classroom looks like now. We envision that might look a bit different back to normal, you could say, in come September. Induction week, you'll find your way around, you'll get to know people. You'll hear from the prefects and, and the head of year and myself and Mr Foley again, just what it's like to be at the college. The school captain will speak to you as well. Mr Doyle is going to follow me in a second. He's going to talk about the classroom and our excellence in education. But I wanted to talk very briefly about everything else that happens in our college. So drop an early marker of all the activities that happen. We are excellent and we strive for excellence in all that we do in and outside the classroom. But outside the classroom, as you can see from the screen, there are many things that we do. And the reason we get involved and so many staff get involved outside the classroom activities is to build those relationships with our students, with our boys, to get to know them, to get them to know them as people. And that can happen in many different ways. It can happen in the music department, the competitions up and down the country, on the stage of the drama department, whether it be a one act play, whether it be the junior or senior musical or getting involved in, straight, in the stage crew um, for that. On the rugby pitch, we have six teams in first year. Mr McCarthy, who you're going to hear from later on, and I take the lads every Saturday morning and Wednesday afternoons um, for first year, along with a number of other coaches. And we, we tend to have the lads who haven't played rugby before, who are there just for the fun. I will encourage you all to get involved in that. We have trips and exchanges. We go to Austria, to the US, China, as well as many play other places in Ireland and abroad. We have a large pastoral departments who run retreats for every year group, um, every year. They also have different types of trips over to Calcutta or Taizé. We have a very, very important part of our college is our social justice programme, whether it be the Vincent de Paul, and we're still the biggest Vincent de Paul group in the country, the soup run that's organised every Wednesday, or the sleep bed. We have many ways to develop leadership skills. Um, every class from Elements will have a class captain who get involved in student council. Most departments, every department has a, some type of enhancement, enrichment, subject enrichment, um, science buzz or art club. And there's many, many, many more that I haven't mentioned that I can't, there's not enough, just not enough time. But we expect our boys to get involved, to try something new, to pick up new skills, do the best that they can outside the classroom as well as inside the classroom. That is at the heart of Cura Personalis and caring for the whole child. I'll finish now my first section on one, uh, one point that I think is very, very important. I came back after leaving the college in 2003, I came back last year and I sat at the back of the college chapel on the first day of elements. The boys are now in second year and I heard from Mr. Rogan and I heard from Mr. Foley and then the school captain of that year stood up and spoke. And what he said was very simply, if you come to this college and you leave at 335 every single day, you're missing out, you're wasting your opportunity. And it stuck with me because that's what the college was like when I was here and it still is today. Coming to this college is exciting. You're going to make new friends. You're going to learn and experience many new, experience, uh, many new activities and experiences. So please grasp that. Um, and I'll talk to you later on about where you can find out where they are. I'm going to pass on to Mr Doyle now. Thank you, Mr Rice. Um, good, uh, good evening. I want to talk about three areas. I'm going to focus on academic excellence, how we assess in the college and the academic follow ups and tracking that takes place. Firstly, in terms of um, the Jesuits education, uh, Mr Bryce would have mentioned Cure Personalis. 
another area we focus a lot on is the idea of magis or more, which in essence is striving for excellence. We want the boys to achieve their potential in the classroom and outside the classroom. And there's a huge amount of areas that kind of uh, play a role here. Teachers at the college, they promote excellence and academic excellence through peer observation, sharing best practice. They're hugely committed. We have a very established learning and teaching working group in the college. In terms of every subject area, every, students have so much opportunities for extension. Mr. Bryce would have mentioned Science Buzz in debating in English in French in Spanish, Irish, German. We have cookery club, drama, music. We have the college archives. We have green schools. Uh, most, most recently, we've achieved our fifth uh, green flag. Mr. Bryce also would have mentioned the prefix. Every year we have 50 plus six year prefix and each one of these prefix has a role. They have a link area. Many of them are linked in with subjects and they organize lunchtime activities, talks and quizzes throughout the year. At the beginning of every academic year, we also celebrate academic excellence through the headmaster's uh, ties or awards. And there's three different uh, categories and Maroon was, is the academic tie. And uh, throughout this, in every year group, students are recognized for excellence across all subjects. The chapel is very much the heart of the college. I suppose uh, another in incredibly important part of the college is the library. It's the focus point of learning. It's a modern resource center, very welcoming, inclusive environment. It's stacked with subject specific resources and every morning you'll find students in there from 745 and after school you'll find students there um, well into the evening. Homework is also a very important part of what happens in reinforcing excellence. Um, students will have homework every night and the assignments serve an incredibly important purpose. Students will benefit by gaining and improved grades, better study habits, be, and they'll have a, a very positive attitude in, in terms of their own learning and school. Every student will receive a, a journal, a college journal, where they're expected to record their homework and in element students or first years, uh, we expect uh, first years, second years, third years, that the journal should be signed by parents and guardians on a weekly basis. Um, later, I'll also touch on the, uh, the journal because it, it contains exemplars which, which guide the students on its use as many study guides and reflection sheets. In terms of assessment, in October, we have our midterm where we gather effort grades and comments in relation to all the students. Twice yearly, we have formal house exams at Christmas and at the end of the summer term. Following these um, house exams, reports are made available to parents on our VSWare system, and these reports will be composed of a grade and a comment from your subject teacher, but along with that, you'll get a detailed form tutor report. And the follow up process is incredibly important. Each parent is strongly encouraged to respond to these reports through a parent reply form. And just here now in January um, and in February, we received over 1700 individual subject comments from parents. And at the moment, form tutors and year heads and the leadership team are working through them. Along with the teacher reports and the parent reply process, Another important part of uh, following up and um, reinforcing assessment is student reflection. We have specific mornings put aside in September, November and January, and students will go through self reviews in their journal and they'll identify areas that they want to consolidate or focus on for the next term. And they'll do this in their form classes with their form tutors. Along with this, in every subject, you will find teachers using reflection templates uh, where they'll go through the most common mistakes that, that would have occurred on the test. They allow students opportunities to look at the scripts and focus on specific areas or topics or parts of the answers or types of questions that they need to revisit and work on. The final area that I'll focus on is academic tracking and reporting here in the college. In terms of academic tracking, this happens firstly, it happens throughout the year subject teachers um, within the class, obviously using the journal, tests, feedback. Every subject department will have their own feedback policy as well and times of the year when they will uh, take up work and give back uh, comments and areas for students to focus on. We also have very standardised and coordinated feedback and academic tracking that happens throughout the year as well. This happens after the house exams 
and also uh, after the October grades. So it'll be in September, in November and in January. This whole process, I suppose the, the center point to this would be your year head and the year head along with the foreign tutors, they will go through the subject reports, the grades, and they'll identify a whole series of interventions. Now the vast majority of interventions are positive. It's where they will reaffirm good practice and praise and support the students on how well they've done in their exams and how well they've done in the previous term. They'll also use systems such as Athena or uh, where they look at the raw ability or the CAT scores or to look at the contents of the reports or uh, they'll link in with the subject teachers. They'll also uh, use uh, the advice um, of guidance and uh, they'll get guidance to link in with students in terms of study skills and study plans. We also have a, a very hard working uh, additional education needs department and they'll link in where required. The form shooter follow up is hugely important. There's a chaplain system. Um, the year heads are fully aware of all the interventions that take place in September, in November and in January and then uh, towards the end of this period, they also have meetings with their linked deputies. So Mr. Bryce, Mr. McCarthy and myself, where they go through the six year groups and we have an overview of the year and we use this process to plan ahead for the for the coming term and um, to see what other interventions can be put in, in place. Um, and just to go back to what Mr. Bryce spoke about, this tracking is very much part of our core idea of Cura Personalis um, of uh, taking care of the students and supporting them. Hand you over to Mr. McCarthy, Deputy Principal. He's also the link with third and fourth years. Colin, you're mute. Typical. Thank you, Tom. Um, I am going to be lucky enough to be one of the first to meet your sons when they attend Camp Belvo uh, in August. Um, you will receive information on Camp Belvo um, at a later time. For now, I'm going to take you through the exciting new junior cycle, which is uh, a Department of Education led initiative. This is a new type of learning. Okay. We have moved away from the traditional rote learning. And this gives a greater emphasis and puts a greater emphasis on continuous assessment. It's been in the pipeline since about 1997 and it's been worked on by the NCCA. It's been implemented incrementally since 2014, 2015. And this year we'll see all subjects involved. The new junior cycle has been developed to promote a range of principles and key skills seen throughout the curriculum. Students can sit a maximum of 10 subjects. Each, stu each student will have a classroom based assessment and we'll call these CBAs. This will happen in both second year and in third year. The CBAs will apply to all subjects. In second year, the subjects, the students will be in groups and they will research a topic and complete a project. In third year, the students will work individually and complete a project. Then one of these CBAs will include a presentation. Students will also complete a written assessment task and this will be completed in the classroom. It will be submitted and then will account for 10% of the final grade. Boys will sit a terminal exam in June, so they will have, still have that to look forward to. By this stage, however, they will be well prepared. Students will receive a grading. This will either be a distinction, a higher merit, a merit achieved, partially achieved or not achieved. There are non-exam non subjects also, which are also important. And on this slide, we will see that these are CSPE, SPAG, RE and of course PE. Students will partake in other activities. They'll take, partake in activities such as retreats, study skills, pastoral activities um, and, and they'll experience guest speakers as well. All of this will encompass our wellbeing programme. On completion, our students will receive 
a junior cycle profile of achievement. This will show the grade for the students, and the subjects that they are assessed in. It will show their CBAs, and it will receive, they will receive a written report of learning and other school achievements. The final thing I want to speak to you about is technology. We're an iPad college. A couple of years ago, I was in your position because I had a young lad starting first year. The iPads made, they were a terrific addition. They made such a, such a difference. Obviously, more recently, this has become more evident. Your iPads are ordered through Riggle, an online store, and this happens in April. You'll receive full instructions about all this and how to complete this by email. For security and support reasons, um, we don't support a bring your own device. We stick with our we stick with our devices. Each boy will have ebooks and hard copies. And this book list will be published on our website in May. You can publish these books in your local bookshop. On the cover of the hard copy, there's a code and there'll be instructions on how to upload the ebook onto your iPad. You'll be issued with instructions, instructional videos and guides uh, along the way. The ebooks and iPads will be used in the classroom and for home study. And workbooks and exercises can also be used. I'm now going to hand you over to Miss Curran. And thank you very much for your time. Good evening, everybody. I'm delighted to come along tonight to explain what we do in the guidance department in Belvedere College. It's an extremely active guidance department, and I'm going to take you through a couple of slides just to explain exactly how we link in with your son in elements. So on the first slide here, you can see my colleague, Miss O'Donoghue, and in the college, we split up the classes. So each of us take three classes for first year, and we work with those three classes all the way through, working with them each year in different uh, projects. And we work with them all the way up through to the senior cycle. So we really get to know your sons as we work through the whole uh, six years. Um, in addition to that, then we also offer a different range of services as well regarding we have a fantastic website, which is only brand new and has been up, gets updated regularly. In addition to that, we have a very active social media account and um, we have the Twitter account, we have Instagram, and we have Facebook. We also post lots of information up on their Teams account. So when they come into the school next year on their iPads, they'll be using MS Teams, which is a uh, Microsoft package. And we post lots of information up there for different events that they can attend. And we always encourage first years and second years and third years from the start to try and start beginning to have a look around different career events. There's so much stuff that's an offer in the school and it's not just for the senior cycle students, it's also for the younger students as well. Just to open up and start even looking at for, from a first year. As I move to the next slide, I'm going to bring in some more information. So in all guidance plans in all schools, there's three strands of guidance program. The vocational guidance one, the educational guidance one and the social and personal. And if you move to the next slide, I'll show you how that sits in with the elements program. So in elements, we have a transitioning year program. This is a program that has been designed. It's a tailored program and I'm going to take you through more detail in that in a minute. Sorry, if we just go back one slide there. This we have that and we have um. Sorry, just give me two seconds. The Taylor Transition Program. Sorry, just go back to the last slide. Thank you. Uh, program developed and integrated into our junior guidance curriculum via our form tutors, myself and Ms. O'Donoghue, and also through the SPHE program. This was developed and it now rests in under the form tutor SPHE in the guidance. Peer mentors. There's a fantastic peer mentor program for fifth years, which link in with this particular program as well. And there's loads of activities that the peer mentors and they also have prefects as well in um, in first year. So it's a mix of fifth years, first years and also the guidance counsellors, the SPHE teachers, form tutors as well. In addition to that, then they're able to make one to one appointments by a request if they want with chaplains or indeed with the guidance department. Moving on to the educational part of it, we have a study skills program. And in that, sorry, just go back to the last slide. In the study skills program, we have an annual study skills week where we have different lunchtime talks where the students can go along and bring their lunch and they sit in the lecture theatre. And hopefully that will all be back next year for your students coming in. 
And what we do is we introduce different types of study skills. We introduce time management skills. We introduce organizational skills. We also introduce nutrition and sleep and the importance of how of these things are just as equally important as obviously um, time management and organizational skills. Sleep hygiene and um, everything to do with nutrition, how to eat properly and also studying in general. We do a lot of work around how to actually study because we find not everybody knows when they come into school how to actually study. So it just puts them at ease around that kind of stuff just to give them the skills that they need to actually progress their learning as such. In addition to that, each of the students get a study journal and that's a specific book journal that they get to take home. We set that up with them in classroom study skills classes and it comes from a company called Super Generation and has specific ways of actually studying. It also is backing up the information that we do in the Study Skills Week and the classes. And in addition to that, it has a fantastic program at the back where we set them, get them to set up all their different subjects so that they're tracking exactly what they're meant to be tracking for first year. So they know what they're covering in each class. Also, as part of the Study Skills Journal, in the actual school journal, there's a topic section and in that section they're able to write down on a daily basis what topic they covered. And that's really important when it comes to studying. So they know exactly what topic they covered in class. So that's linked in with the study journal. So it's like a little system for them. We also run a study skills seminar for parents and that's run each year, usually in the study skills week. And we actually had a webinar today from the same company for our second year and third year students and our fifth and sixth year students. So that's run every year and um, this year it was by Zoom and it was it was really it went really well. And it just gives you the support as well to help you know exactly what way we're teaching them to study and to give you the support so that you can actually sit down and help them if necessary as well. So you have the skills as well to show them. Um, also in the journal, and I know um, Mr Doyle referred to this earlier on, there's a self review part and it's getting down to specifics. What exactly? So, for example, if I want to move my grade or improve my, my grade, what exactly do I need to do? It's actually putting it out on a page exactly what I need to do. First, it's just thinking this is what I need to do. We actually invite the students um, every month to actually do a self review and see exactly what would they like to improve. Could be other, it could be other things other than academic as well. It could be getting involved in co-curricular and we always encourage that into co-curricular because we know the value of the importance of actually um, taking a holistic view of, of the student. So it's really important and we encourage a lot. We encourage that um, a lot in, in the guidance as well. We also then do one to one appointments for uh, students based on study or organisation skills. So if, if your son is, is struggling to, to study or to get himself organised, he can set up a one to one appointment via his form tutor and we do group study skills as well support. In addition to that, they get a study skills class as well. So they get lots and lots of support around study skills and organisation and time management, especially in first year as part of transition programme. But in addition to that, we also do additional study skills classes. Vocational end, we have lots of lunchtime talks. So usually on a Tuesday and Thursday in the college um, each week, we either have a profession, a professional person come in and talk about a different career sector, or we do a college. Or we could have a past pupil who's coming in to tell them what their journey was. There's different things happening um, every week and we um, send it out usually in the Bevedere app, which you'll all be on next year and it gives you some communication around exactly what's on. And we also ask the students who would they like to see and we get lots of um, information around that and we set up those particular uh, events based on what the what the actual student would like to see as well. So for example, if someone's interested in engineering or science, we'll always try and get either a parent like yourselves and Rob's grateful to get any help from, from parents for these kind of events. If you would like to get involved, please email myself, a current at Belvedere College and let me know. But we're always delighted to have parents involved and parents come in and they do talks around different careers that they're involved in. And the students really love that because they get a sense of actually what the career might look like when they leave school. They might have an idea, but it's great to get that as well as the information in the course and the kind of person that would uh, would take on that career. So it's just know what skills that they need to work towards. So that's really uh, helpful. We have another new um, initiative this year. It's set up by Ms O'Donoghue. It's startup series and focus on careers. So we've had lots of past pupils um, set up their own companies and Ms O'Donoghue has been meeting with them and recording how they did it and exactly from the subjects that they chose in school to where they are now. And it's really good um, information around uh, if you want to identify how a career journey is, is progressing. And it's great to hear from the past pupils as well. Students love hearing from past pupils. Um, and past pupils are great because they love coming back in and sharing their stories as well. We also have a business club. So if your son are, are, is interested in business and things, there's a business club that runs and it's really it's really uh, effective too. Miss McCormick's involved in that and the science club. And also as part of the junior curriculum, we also introduce a pathways lesson, which introduces them to all the different avenues that they can take after they uh, go to school in a very uh, gentle way, just to begin the process for them. And if you can move on to the next slide, please. So my school year. So this is all around the actual transitioning into the school. So 
I sat in the same seat as you did, um, like Mr McCarthy was talking about there. I've had a son in first year and is now in his sixth year. And I spent my time thinking about how actually would he make the transition into the school. And at the same time, I was doing a master's up in guidance and counselling in DCU. So I decided to, for my final year, I would focus on my thesis on what actually looks like a successful transition for a student into first year. With that, I began to do my research around it. I did loads of surveys and I found out from parents that had previously had students that transitioned in exactly what it would look like. So if we just move on to the next slide, please. So we looked at things like what 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 is your what is your son potentially going to be thinking? And this isn't everybody, obviously. Um, and most students make a successful transition into school. But some of the worries that they might have, like are all are all all the new subjects, like there's going to be so many subjects to look at, meeting new friends. I say most of your most of your sons have probably been surrounded by their classmates for the last eight years and they're very familiar and all of a sudden then they're capulated into um, an unfamiliar world of lockers, complicated timetables, new demands from teachers, new social circles. And if that wasn't enough, adolescence is a time of multiple changes for your son. So all this transition is going on and these are the kind of worries potentially they might have. So if you would just move on to the next slide, please. So with that in mind, we took that and we said, OK, well, how are we actually going to help a student transition into Belvedere College? So from my thesis, I developed a program, a transitioning program into Belvedere College, which was a six week program. So six week of class and um, different classes each week. So they're moving from a place where they're the tallest, the oldest, most senior students to a place where they're the smallest, youngest and the most junior. They're moving from one building to another as such. But the good thing is about in Belvedere College, when they come in in first year, they actually stay in the same building, not like other schools where they have to move around. So it's less moves for them. So it's a little bit easier to manage as such. And also with the iPad, which is brilliant as well, they have all their books on the one place, so they don't have the worry of carrying around all their books as such. So, but they have got new things going on. It's a longer day for them. It's a longer commute for some students. They've new subjects, they've homework. They're getting home from different teachers. They're trying to manage taking everything down their journal. They're trying to do their very best. Um, they're much tireder because of a longer day and um, all the different teaching styles that they have to take into account and the concerns that they might have. So, and they're used to one teacher, you know, and then all of a sudden things are moving for 40 minutes and they, they get another teacher in. Now, in general, students settle quickly into secondary school. Uh, most feel that they settled in by the end of the first week when I talk to them. But for some of them, it takes maybe over a month to do, and then some take a little bit longer. So the research has shown that there's key skills that we need and that is necessary for the for a student to make a successful transition. And they've all been integrated into the plan that I have in front of you there. So from goal setting to organisational skills, to time management skills, to school supports, to school year, to values, they're all the lessons that we're going to cover with them. And they're all part of a new junior cycle guidance. So I was involved in developing a new junior cycle guidance with the um, with the company that set the whole program up. It's the NCGE and they're the part of the government agency for guidance. So we work together and we developed this program for the junior cycle. So this sits alongside our transition program. It's all integrated together. So the skills that are here were necessary to make a successful transition to secondary school, like goal setting, like organisational, time management and adaptability is a key one as well. So being able to adapt to change in a positive way. These skills have an effect on all issues and um, as noted as concerns. So after we rolled out this program the first year, we did a survey and these are the things that came back in addition to the stuff that we had in place. So we integrated that in. It was like an action research project per se. So we used this information and um, we continued it on and each year we improve on this and uh, we see how the students have settled in. So we start the program with settling in and adapting to your new school program which is like the whole one there about my school supports. We identify what school supports are in place, if they need any help on anything in particular. We identify all the different teachers in all the different areas to make sure that they know the teachers' names, because that's one thing that really helps them settle in. I know that doesn't sound like a big thing, but it's actually one really strong um, aspect that actually helps them. And then we introduce them to how to manage their time because it's such a different day than they usually have and how to juggle all the demands. We teach them how to actually set up a timetable, introducing a weekly schedule just to get a sense of what time that they have, because sometimes they're not sure where they should be, how long it takes them to get to the bus stop. And we introduce little tips around even the bus, even like something like having a ski card, the thing that you use when you're going skiing and you have a little card in it and you can swipe it. So we use that even to have their actual card in for the bus so it's handy and they can just pull it out of their pocket. So I often get the students to come up with ideas. What, what, what makes it easier for you so that they can share them? So we have these kind of discussions in class to help everybody feel um, 
that there's other ideas there to help you settle in as well. And we have great discussions around that as well, like, you know, how are you feeling today and is it, is it going well for you? So everybody gets a chance to have a chat around it. So then we look at the time manager, we look at organisational skills, we teach them how to actually organise themselves from getting the school uniform out the night before and getting everything organised the night before versus leaving until the next morning. It's in order to have time in the morning that you're not rushing. That's really important and we really get them to really try and do that. So we give them little tasks each week to try and put into place. Then we move on to goal setting and we introduce the SMART goal system. And we explain the importance of SMART goals and how to set specific goals. And we start off with small goals and teach them how to actually begin um, goals. Uh, setting goals in general and that's really helpful as well so they begin to get a sense of okay well, where's where am I going with all the stuff that I'm actually doing and in addition to that as I said the students are also supported by their form tutors teachers and your heads to enable students to have a smooth transition into secondary school but again the peer-to-peer -peer mentoring program is an excellent program for fifth years and they, they link in with first years and I often see them in the library with the first years around them having a chat they just really help them if they've any other queries or concerns that they really help them to understand what, how the school works and if there's anything else that they want and that's run by, by Mr Kerry he's done a fantastic job of that and um, so they have also got that mentor program as well which is really good and all this is well and good and it's a really a great effective programme, but without your input, we need your input into this as well to help your son settle into school. But even checking in on them on a daily basis, see how they're getting on, ensuring that they have the uniform and kit bag or other equipment ready the night before. Uh, go through their timetable with them. We often get the students to take a, a snapshot of on their iPad of their actual timetable from the back of their journal so they know exactly what classes they should be in. And it's handy because they'll just have to press the button and, and they're onto it. Encouraging your child to write their homework into the journal. If you can get them into that habit from day one, that'd be fantastic. That's one of the key things that they need to do. It might be a useful conversation you know, to sit down and just show you and explain to you what homework they've had that day. Make sure that they're putting in the topic aspect as well. And then a really strong one as well is encouraging them to participate in extracurricular activities as this can help them build new friendships and prevent and um, becoming isolated, particularly the musical. I mean, I know that isn't on this year, unfortunately, but it's a great way of getting to know the whole year. And um, it usually starts off in September and it's a brilliant way to actually get to know other people outside your own class. And also the Camp Belvo, as Mr McCarthy was talking about, that's another brilliant way to actually to get to know the lads and often when you come into the school and you're talking to them how, how did they get on with that they really enjoy that because they've made lots of friends and that's the key to it so finally as your son is now embarking on two very significant transitions the transition from primary school to secondary school and then the transition from childhood to adolescence uh, we look forward to anticipation to help them through this journey and um, and relish meeting all the new people in their classes and exploring their new environment and their subjects so as I'd say, uh, maybe it's time to let go of their hand and instead look over their shoulder as they move towards their next uh, step in their lives as such. So that's that aspect from the guidance department. And I want to just take you through a couple of things about subject choice and then I will finish up. So it's some things to consider and you're probably sitting there looking, thinking about what subjects you might choose for next year. It's key few things to actually think, talk about. So review the subject that you're thinking of taking. Look online. There's a fantastic website called careersportal.ae and on that website they have a link into the junior uh, cycle subjects but also the short courses. If you go into the educational part on it and um, it's at the top. If you go into tools and then into education it'll give you a full overview of all the junior cycle subjects. So it's really good to actually sit down and go through the subjects and see what the content is. That's really important. The whole idea about subject choice coming into school and also in your, in your, um, when you're picking subjects for the senior uh, cycle is that you're making an informed decision, that you've actually sat down and looked what the content is actually on the actual course. Discuss, look at the reports, look where their strengths are, um, look what they're interested in. Interest is key when it comes to your subjects. You could be really strong at something, but if you didn't have an interest, um, you wouldn't be as motivated to do it. Reflect, develop a pros and cons list, make an informed decision. Ask the following, do I like the subject? Is there a chance I might need this for further study? Decide, give them the opportunity to make an informed decision, sit down with them, go through the pros and cons, go through the content and the things. We do not have a crystal ball, as I said here, to, you know, to look into the consequences of our decisions, but we tend to be happier if we are making an informed decision. Just be advised well that in Belvedere College, a modern language is mandatory for the full six years and science is mandatory to the end of fourth year, where then students can choose their leaving search subjects for the senior cycle. A modern language and a lab science may be an essential subject for third level courses in Ireland. Just be mindful of that as well, please. And let me just move on to the next slide, please. So there's loads of resources to help you choose your subject choice. Careers Portal, as I mentioned, Skullnet, Education.ie, there's lots of different websites there, career websites. If you can get your hands on junior certificate uh, course books, brilliant, um, and then Belvedere College website also has videos up there as well and um, the NCCA website has all the different leaflets and all the fact sheets on all the different subjects as well. 
I move on to the next one, please. And that's it. So I'd like to hand it over now to Mr. Carey. Thank you very much for your time tonight and the very best of luck. And we welcome you. Look forward to welcoming all your boys in when they come in in September. I'll hand it now to Mr. Carey. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Kern, uh, and good evening, everybody. As she, as Ms. Kern said, my name is Mr. Carey, uh, and I've worked in the school for about 13 years now. And part of my role in the school is developing the timetable and developing the scheduling of the various different classes and coordinating the subject choices for incoming first years and students going into fifth year. So with this um, link to this presentation, you would have also received a link to a Microsoft form. Um, the other links to the various different career portals, etc., and subject choice information that Ms. Curran mentioned are included in that form. The Microsoft form is um, exceptionally important. We have a deadline on it of 9 a.m. on Monday morning, the 22nd of February, and we would ask people to um, take some time between now and then and be sure to fill that in entirely. The first two sections of the form are personal information pertaining to your son and contact information. Um, for, for you um, as, as parents, and there's a couple of other bits and pieces in there. What I'm going to talk to you tonight is section three, which is in relation to subject choice. As Ms. Curran mentioned there, it is very, very important that your son is involved in this process. And um, it's very important that they are involved in having an input into their choice of subjects. As Ms. Curran also pointed out, it can be quite a daunting time. They're used to one teacher, and they're used to actually being dictated what subject they do, when and where. And this will probably be one of their first times in education where they actually have a choice as to what subjects they, they, they will study. There are, as it explains in the form, there are a number of core subjects. OK, so every student will study English, Irish and maths. They will also study history, geography and science. And science is broken up into the various disciplines. But for the first three years, they'll study all disciplines. They'll also study ORE, they'll study CSPE, which is Civic, Social and Political Education. They'll study SBHE, which is Social and Personal Health Education. And then they will study PE, uh, Physical Education. And um, they will be referred to as the core subjects. And um, yeah, all, all students will do those. In addition to those subjects, every student um, and you can see from the slide in front of you there on question 21 on the form every student will study an mfl now an mfl is a modern foreign language okay so the modern european languages and the three that we offer in belvedere college are french spanish and german and we've asked um, students to pick which one they would rather do we have a certain amount of these classes of each subject that we can have based on our staffing um, and so therefore we are asking to um, provide preferences. It may not be possible to cater for everyone's preference and we will be operating a lottery system provided the form is in on time. Any forms coming in after the 22nd of February um, won't necessarily get their first preference, but please fill in your preferences and um, number one, two, three there for the modern foreign language. If um, you have a great interest in languages and if your son is potentially a very linguistic young man, he absolutely has the opportunity to study two, but not all three, two of those. And I'll describe how he would be able to make that choice later on in a further slide. So we want to move on to question 22 now on the forum, and that is pertaining to subject options. So each student will select two of these subject options, and I'm just going to talk very briefly about each one of them. So art, um, very much a practical subject, very much project based. Uh, we're very lucky that um, just at Christmas we finished a brand new refurb refurbishment of our art department um, at the very top of the, the oldest building in the college, or one of the oldest buildings in the college over the Finlay wing. Um, but we have a very uh, active, um, art departments and they have now brand new refurbished state-of-the-art facilities. Um, business studies, business studies is quite a large subject in the, in the college. It opens up to three separate leaving cert subjects and uh, we have an awful lot of business studies teachers. A lot of our students take business studies um, and we have a long tradition of very good um, results in that area. 
Your son is entering a Jesuit school and the Jesuits um, have been steeped in tradition of teaching the classical subjects. It's what Jesuit schools and Jesuit education is synonymous for. Belvedere is very proud of our tradition and we are one of the few schools in the country still op offering Leaving Cert Greek and Leaving Cert Latin. The, the courses we used to offer Junior Cert Greek and Junior Cert Latin, but the two of those have been combined now in the new junior cycle to a classics course. There is lots of options in that course and we still, because we want to still continue with our Leaving Cert Latin and our Leaving Cert Greek, we have adapted those courses that one of them will follow the, the Latin module and the other will follow the Ancient Greek module. Now there is a lot of um, general classic stuff that's common to both. But if he'd like to do one or the other, unfortunately he won't be able to do both, uh, one or the other uh, of those, um, he'd be following in a long line of Jesu Jesuit educated young men. And the next subject I have, and I'll come back to French in a moment, the next subject is home economics. And again, we have a state-of-the-art food laboratory there. Um, and it's a very dynamic subject. It's a new addition, a uh, newish addition. And um, it's been running in school about six or seven years now um, with great success and great popularity. Our music department are very vibrant departments in the college. And what's really, really good news is that at the moment, parts of the school look like a building site, but hopefully by the time your son enters or very shortly after, we will have our brand new state-of-the-art Temple Street building. Floor two and floor three of that are dedicated to absolute second to none music facilities, uh, brand new music classrooms, performance spaces, rehearsal spaces, recording studios, and um, the, the co-curricular uh, involvement of music is, is so vast it's worth a presentation on its own but if your son is in any way musically inclined or would like to be no previous experience necessary um, music would definitely be an excellent place in which we could foster his talents as i said previously there is an opportunity to study a second modern foreign language if he wishes so we are offering french and spanish here again um, and again it will depend on the numbers that wish to do it and we would like to hopefully offer it um, but if, for example, he wants to do French and Spanish, but French is his preference, he should fill in French on question 21 and put Spanish down here. If he wishes to do German with one of either French or Spanish, he needs to fill in German as part of question 21 and the other French or Spanish here in question 22. If you have any questions, of course, you can e email and the details are on the form. We have given you room here for three options, despite the fact that he will only study two. And again, these should be filled in with order of preference, and we will do our best to accommodate his first two choices, but unfortunately we cannot guarantee that. So moving on now to question 33, the last module, if we could move along there, Mr. Weiss. And um, the last subject choice he'll have is in what's known as a short course. So a short course has about half the time allocation as a regular subject um, and they are just they're introduced in the in the junior cycle as another opportunity of learning a kind of more diverse certainly less academic way of learning there's no terminal exam and the assessment of these is project based and they're very much um, activity focused modules and your son has the option of six, however, he will only get to do one uh, and he'll carry that short course for the three years. And the, the six options are artistic performance, um, which can take the form of, of poetry readings, drama recitals, singing. Um, and again, we have we're very lucky to have the state of the art O'Reilly Theatre, professional theatre um, in the school and the artistic performance group make great use of that facility. We have ceramics again run by our um, art department in their state of the art um, facilities. We have Chinese, which is an intro it's introduction to the Oriental languages, and that is a, a subject that continues in fourth year. And, you know, hopefully by the time your son reaches uh, Leaving Cert, it may well be offered as a Leaving Cert subject. We have coding combined with digital media literacy. Um, and this is for people that are more interested in finding out exactly how that iPad works as opposed to just using it, finding out what's going on in the background. Philosophy links in very much with our history, our English and our ORE programs. And it would be very discussion based where they'd have walking debates and they talk about 
um, ethical issues and topical issues. And then the last one is urban farm. And as a branch of our science department, uh, we also offer ag science, agricultural science at Leaving Cert. We have an urban farm. So we have a full um, rooftop urban farm um, equipped with various types of fish, uh, bees, various different plants, herbs, flowers. Um, and this is run by a couple of people, um, our agricultural science teacher, we have another member of staff for, for the urban farm as well, and an awful lot of student groups. So our short course, our first, second and third year urban farmers uh, also take charge in running and making that a sustainable green space. So once again, we're asking you to fill in three options here, um, but he will only get to study one of those um, as they again should be in the order of preference. So just before I finish up, I just want to remind you um, of the deadline being the 22nd of February. And as I said, any forms submitted after that date, unfortunately, um, may not get their first preference. They may have to be allocated to where there is space. Um, it is, as you can imagine, an onerous enough task setting up these classes for 168 students and work will begin on that pretty much immediately after the 22nd of February. So that's all for me before I hand back to Mr. Bryce. Mute. Thank you, Mr. McCarthy. Thank you, Mr. Kerry. I just want to say thank you to all our um, our speakers tonight, and I hope we've given you a good um, a good insight into what your first um, few weeks and months will be like at Belvedere College. Before we finish up, a couple of points. I have also attached an email that came out today. I've attached um, some subject videos with some of our students talking through um, the subjects and um, that will help you in the subject selection. In terms of communication, um, we work very hard to make sure our communication out of the college is as good as possible. We use uh, three forms of communication um, primarily. First of all, we use college mail for lengthy or confidential communication. Um, the details that you're sending in now are very important that we get that right. So um, your email and mobile details will be updated to our system and that's how we communicate it to you. If that changes at all over the next few months after the forms go in or next year, please do email reception at belvedercollege.ie. We have a college app that we use um, to post information, notification, notifications, reports, any lates that happen, absences or permissions to leave early, for example. Again, we will email out the details closer to the time, closer to June on that college app. And finally, we use um, our college newsletter and social media. So our college newsletter goes out every two weeks and um, it updates it on everything that happens in the college. You can find that on our website at the moment. And you can also see um, on social media some of the things that are going on in the newsletter. So please have a look at that um, before you, you join us in September. One of my roles in the, the process this year is to set up the form classes. The way we do this is we, we have CAT4 testing where the students come into school um, for a couple of hours and they do some CAT4 testing. Um, unfortunately, that hasn't happened because of COVID restrictions. We would have been in contact before about this. Over the next couple of months, we when the restrictions are lifted and are eased, we will have the students in to do some testing. Further details will follow. And that means we can have, um, with those results, we have mixed ability classes. In terms of the form classes, I'll be putting those lists together based on a number of factors, including the CAT testing and primary schools. But if there are any special requests that you um, you have, say that your son, for example, has been in the same class as two other boys or three other boys, his best friends the whole way through primary school, and you'd like them to be in different form classes coming to Belvedere or any other reasons um, that for form class selection, please do let me know. My email is on the email you were sent today for any inquiries on that and um, please let me know that will be treated in the strictest confidentiality. So say thank you again to um, to Mr. Carey, to the uh, Ms. Curran, to the deputies Colin and Tom, to Mr. Foley. The most important thing now is that the forms come back in, Mr. Carey said, 
the 22nd of February is um, the deadline for, for the Microsoft form online. And the 26th of February is the deadline for the, um, the, the other forms um, that you were sent. If you have any questions, please do email us. That's what we're here for. Wish you a wonderful evening. Please watch the videos that are also on the, um, on the, the email you were sent today. Have a great day.